I hate to disappoint you, but we contain absolutely no sexual references and very little adult content at all. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a brand new season of In Pit Lane. I can hear Stuart sort of firing up upstairs. Stuart, if you're listening, don't. Yes, we're back, believe it or not. Yeah, oh, it hasn't taken long, has it? He's already started. Yes, we are back on the air, believe it or not, by popular demand. Not ours, mind you, but other people's. So it is good to be back and, uh, and thanks a lot. We've got a lot of new people around, a lot of new crew. So uh, thank you to everybody who's uh, coming and helped us out here on a brand new season of In Pit Lane. We've, we've made some changes. It might be sort of blatantly obvious to you, but we've had the, we've had the co corporate consultants in. They're the same people that channel, redesigned Channel 9's new logo. And we've paid them... Uh, another $350,000 and they've decided that now I shall sit on the left hand side of the desk. So there, I think that's money well, well invested. Speaking of money well invested, if you have money to invest and you'd like to go racing, the uh, probably the fastest one make series in the world is the Carrera Cup and it's just growing absolute gangbusters. You probably saw them if you went out to uh, Albert Park on the weekend. We'll be joined a little bit later on by two of the top young competitors in that category. They are Dean Fiore and David Reynolds. But right now now, look, we might as well just catch up on what's been happening. There's been a lot happening while we've been away. We're not going to give you all the last six months. We'll just give you sort of what's been happening of the most recent weekend as we go to the In Pit Lane Motorsport News. Well, news of In Pit Lane's return to the airwaves has been met by spontaneous outbreaks of celebration right across Melbourne. A celebration, a, a large but annoying athletics gym carnival was recently held, while last weekend at Albert Park a far more appropriate celebration was held involving fast cars, excessive consumption of alcohol and lycra-clad grid girls. Even Murray Walker came out of retirement. And do you know what? At least on television, it wasn't half bad. The action began before the race proper had even started as Juan Pablo Montoya spun his McLaren on the warm-up lap. Thankfully for the Colombian, Giancarlo Fisichella stalled the Renault, causing a restart. Go, go, go! And a lovely start. Jensen Button won the start, but back in the pack, David Coulthard, Felipe Massa and Nico Rosberg came together, forcing the Ferrari and the Williams out of the race. Between Massa, Rosberg just had the whole rear wing assembly torn from his Williams. And two crashes in two days for Felipe Massa. Alonso passed Button at the restart, but it wasn't long before the safety car was out again after Christian Clean put the red bull into the wall. Very heavy impact with the wall down at nine. And that shows how immensely strong those cars are. Local hero Mark Webber delighted the home crowd, leading after the first round of pit stops. But his day ended in disappointment when the Williams slowed to a halt with transmission failure. I have been taught not to use the word tragedy, but for Mark Webber, this is a tragedy. Oh, Michael is in the wall! Michael Schumacher hit the wall hard, coming onto the main straight. He was so keen to avoid the waiting media that he made his escape via the Toyota garage. The magnetic attraction of the Albert Park concrete cast its spell again, this time attracting the Toro Rosso of Liuzzi. Once again, a shower of sharp carbon fibre litters the tarmac track. Oh, oh, Montoya almost repeated just Schumacher's the, crash, the but just managed to hold on when the electrics went screwy. Amid all the chaos, Alonso and Renault showed their class with a comfortable win from Raikkonen and Ralph Schumacher, who had worked his way through the field for a much-needed podium for Toyota. Fisichella put pressure on Button to the end, and it told, not on the Englishman, but on his Honda V8, which cried enough with only two corners remaining to delight picture editors around the world with his fiery retirement. After the race, Alonso expressed his total confidence in his car. I think the car was perfect, there was not uh, any risk to lose the, the victory in any time, so I was quite big confidence. I mean, you can say what you like about Murray Walker, but, but gee, it was good to hear him back. I mean, the guy, what, 82 or something years old, and he, st he still does it. He made all the same mistakes as usual, but with Murray, who cares? It was fabulous to hear him back, and uh, that was a bit of a treat. So congratulations to Channel 10 and everybody for, for dragging Murray out of retirement for that. It was well worth it. Holden dominated the three V8 supercar races at Albert Park with Todd Kelly and Stephen Richards sharing the victories. Kelly led Friday's first race from his team leader Mark Scape in a formation Holden Racing 1-2. Craig Lowndes continued his recent form to be the first of the Fords home in third place after Jason Richards was relegated to 28th place for a late-breaking move that officials deemed unacceptable. 
Saturday's longer race saw a win to Richards, giving Larry Perkins his first win in his new uh, black colours for Jack Daniels Racing. Scaife was second, leading home Kelly and setting up the decider for Sunday. It's on! Stephen Richards won the start as Garth Tander put plenty of pressure on Mark Scaife as the field went into turn one for the first time. Max Wilson broke a steering arm, sending the WPS Commodore into the wall. Todd Kelly harassing Craig Lowndes here, coming out of turn 10. Kelly put a move on Lowndes through the fast sweeper and managed to make it stick. Nice work, Todd Kelly. Fabian Coulthard went around in the second of the Cirame Commodores as Jose Fernandez showed his fondness for the beach with another visit to the Albert Park sand trap. We've seen him off track this weekend. Tanda, Tanda knows he's there, they contact. Tanda tried hard to fend off Kelly's advances, but Kelly, in Tanda's car from last year, finally made it through. Richards was well in command and crossed the line first ahead of Scaife and Kelly. The teams will now look forward to a short break before it's across the Tasman for the second round of the Australian V8 Supercar Championship at New Zealand's Pukekohe Raceway. Isn't it good to see Jack Daniels sponsoring motorsport? I, I think that's a wonderful thing. And if they'd like to send any product in, and I'm not talking about caps and T-shirts, we'll give you the address later. The name Senna returned to the winner's dais at the Australian Grand Prix with Bruno Senna, nephew of the late world champion, winning three of the, last, of the weekend's Formula 3 races. The internationals had the wood over the locals with English driver James Winslow winning Friday's first race. Tim Macro was the best of the local drivers with two third places and two second places. New Zealand's Craig Baird looks to be the man to beat in this year's Carrera Cup after taking three race wins at Albert Park. Baird spent the weekend in a neck and neck struggle with former champion Alex Davison with the Kiwi taking three races to one. The Porsches now won't be back on the track until the next round of the series at Wakefield Park in New South Wales in May. And later in the show, we'll be joined by Carrera Cup drivers Dean Fiore and David Reynolds from Sonic Racing. Well, last weekend also marked a very special anniversary with Australia's most successful international racing driver, Sir Jack Brabham, celebrating his 80th birthday. So from all of us here at In Pit Lane, we'll wish Sir Jack a very, very happy birthday and we'll take you to the break with a few memories of the great Sir Jack Brabham. feature of Grand Prix weekend is the chance to catch up with Grand Prix drivers at their regular schedule of photo opportunities. There's Formula One drivers playing tennis, Formula One drivers surfing at Bells Beach, flying with the roulettes, cuddling koalas and massaging corporate egos. We here at Inpit Lane manage to avoid all of it. Well, almost all of it. MW branded helicopter, Jacques was instantly whisked off to a waiting car to drive the 25 metres to the pit lane at Sandown. There he was greeted with the fawning devotion of a second level deity before meeting such household names as Nicky Hudson, Toby Allen and of course the legendary Jeff Fat. The former world champion was then let loose in a BMW M5 for a serious caning of the circuit frightening celebrities, but sadly not putting the car into the Armco, which would have given me the valuable money shot that would have paid for the frontal lobotomy I so desperately need for getting up at 6am to film this crap. Well, of course, BMW have a major involvement with the Australian Grand Prix. I mean, we all know, of course, about the Celebrity Race, which this year, I think, was won by Darren Hinch. But this year, a new event was added, the BMW M3 Track Attack, which gave some valuable exposure to some potential young Australian international champions. Australian international Formula 3 drivers Barton Moore and Carl Reindler, as well as Formula BMW Asia competitor Sam Abbey, hit the track at Sandown to try out the course for the weekend's BMW M3 track attack. Abbey was on pole for his first Formula BMW race at Sepang a few weeks ago and finished second and third in each race. For Reindler and Moore, their paths will this year take them to very different parts of the globe. A pretty important year for me. Uh, we've decided to go to 
British Formula 3, uh, do a full season of that with uh, Alan Docking Racing. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. The first round is in a couple of weeks' time. So how difficult has it been putting the budget together for something like that? It's, a very, it's, it's not a cheap category to get into, British Formula 3, is it? No, it's a very expensive category. Um, it's, I mean, if, no matter who you are, it's, it's always going to be difficult to, to try and raise the budget to race in, a, in an international category. Um, all the drivers this weekend have been in the same position, but uh, it's looking pretty good and we, uh, we should manage a full season over there. The thing you're doing at the Australian Grand Prix this weekend is a, is a bit, of, uh, bit of hit and giggle, as it were, but uh, how important is it in terms of getting your name out there in front of a lot of the corporate uh, audience that will attend an event like the Australian Grand Prix? Well, it's a very important uh, aspect in, as far as a racing driver goes to, to promote themselves and you know, create, a, create a profile, so to speak. Um, so an opportunity like this to, to drive a BMW M3 at the Grand Prix is, is just fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Heading right across over to America, racing in the, uh, the reborn, rejuvenated Formula Atlantic Championship, which is uh, now called the Champ Car Atlantics. New chassis, new engines, and it uh, looks like we signed up with a team very late in the piece, and uh, we're heading over there, so very excited. That series is looking very encouraging at the moment. Already uh, haven't hit the trackers yet, but uh, in testing there was a very big field of cars and a very, very uh, good field of drivers and a lot from Europe, a lot of people that you'd know pretty well. Uh, who do you think will be the people to beat over there? Well, I, I really couldn't pick it. Um, there's a lot of good drivers there. Like you said, a lot of people come from Europe with a big uh, attraction of the prize money and the championship winner gets uh, some funding to basically pay for champ car drive the following year. So with the new cars, a lot of big teams coming in, Forsyth, uh, Walker Racing and Newman, they've all come in and they've brought in all the good people and uh, it, it's going to be really one of the most competitive years over there in a long time. When you were in on the program last year, you were looking forward, obviously, to a full year in uh, British Formula 3. You were still looking for a budget, trying to scrape that up. How hard was last year in terms of financially? Well, it was really tough, Brett. We got going over there. It was pretty much a race-by-race -race deal. And uh, we are leading the championship, which attracted a lot of interest. And we uh, managed to grab a couple of lap records and really hit some stride mid-year. So that got a lot of people on board, and most noticeably, the Australian Motorsport Foundation. And they helped us get to the end of the year, which was fantastic. And actually, they've stayed with us now to help us out with our program over in America. How hard is it to raise funds over here for Australian drivers in Europe? Not just the fact that you're in Europe or the United States, but because it's open wheel or because of the Australia's total obsession with, with V8 supercars. <laughs> well, you've hit the nail on the head, really. Um, we're a country that uh, follows the V8 supercars um, with great passion and there's not much left for the open wheelers. So it makes it difficult for drivers like myself trying to get over there and break into the big world out there. But we've got a few people around us to support us, but we do really need to get a bit more behind us so we can give, a, give ourselves a fair shot over there. So how, is it, how important is something like this that you're doing at the Australian Grand Prix this weekend in terms of raising your profile to corporate Australia? It's massively important. To give you an idea of how uh, high I give this priority, I actually flew back from America to miss um, a bit of pre-season testing there, to be back for this. Um, we're part of the BMW M3 track attack, which is a fantastic thing. So, yeah, to be here, get my name out there and just try to raise my profile and try to rub shoulders with corporate Australia and hopefully we'll be able to generate enough interest to uh, give this year a full shake. Are we ready? Can we hear us now? Yeah, we're okay, we're working around. Yes, yes, we'll apologise for the viewers. What I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, before the technology fell over completely, was that the Victorian State Race Series has been announced, the date for it. There are six rounds kicking off at Sandown in three weeks' time on April 22nd to the 23rd. And as I said, for the first time, the series includes the famous Island Magic Meeting at Phillip Island on November 25th and 26th, and that'll double as the series' grand finale. And In Pit Lane will once again bring you action from the track with Ray race coverage of the Porsche Part 944 Challenge, the Victorian Sports Sedan Championship, the U Newell Tools Improved Production Car Series, and we hope to have an announcement next week regarding at least one other category.
Well, former world champion Damon Hill looks set to make a return to the sport in an administrative capacity. According to the BBC, Hill is being supported by Sir Jackie Stewart to be his replacement as the head of the British Racing Drivers Club. The British Racing Drivers Club are responsible for the Silverstone circuit, whose future as the host of the British Grand Prix is in doubt after plans for a massive redevelopment were knocked back by British Racing Drivers Club rank and file members. The Czech Republic and Malaysia took out the final races in the inaugural A1 Grand Prix series, which wrapped up at the Shanghai circuit on Sunday. Alex Jung won the sprint race in his biggest ever race win ahead of Darren Manning for Great Britain and Salvador Duran of Mexico. Czech driver Thomas Enge won the feature race, leading home Jung, who held off Australia's Ryan Briscoe in the third who was in third. The series was comfortably won by Team France, who had clinched the title at the previous round at Laguna Seca. Sayat is the unlikely leader in the 2006 World Touring Car Championship after two second place finishes at the opening round at Monza. BMW driver Andy Preu won the opening race from Ivan Muller and James Thompson both in Sayat Lyons, while Augusto Farfus won the second race after a challenge by former champ car driver Alex Zanardi ended following contact between the two. Muller was second ahead of the Chevrolet Lissetti of Elaine Menu. Defending NASCAR champion Tony Stewart won Sunday's DirecTV 500 at Martinsville. It was his first win of the season. Jeff Gordon finished second, followed by Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Kyle Busch in a top five clean sweep for Chevrolet. Marcus Ambrose did it tough in his opening race in this year's Craftsman Truck Series at Martinsville. After qualifying in 20th spot in the 39-car field, Ambrose was involved in an incident with two other competitors on lap 150, which brought him into the pits for panel repairs. He returned to the race, but was the last of the classified runners in 33rd position. Veteran driver Elio Castro-Nevis won his first non-oval win in the Indy Racing League, beating New Zealand's Scott Dixon to win the Honda Grand Prix through the streets of St Petersburg. He took the lead on lap 95 after Dixon pitted for fuel. Castro Nevis, who again marked the win with his now signature Finch Climb victory celebration, now leads the IndyCar Series points from Tony Kanaan, who finished third heading into the Indy Japan 300 on April, 27, uh, April 22nd sorry, at the Twin Ring Motegi circuit. And in the NHRA, top fuel driver Brandon Bernstein scored his ninth career victory on Sunday at the Spring Nationals. Bernstein's 4.53 at 329.83 miles per hour beat points leader Melanie Troxell, funny car driver Ron Capps, and, uh, who extended his lead with a win over Bob Gilbertson, and Mike Ed Edwards won in pro stock for the first time in, five, in four years. Angel Sampy took her second win in as many pro stock motorcycle races, beating rival Andrew Hines. Now, what's, what do I need to do with this microphone? Put on, yes, I'm trying to put it on my tie, but if I put it on my tie... There. Now, are you happy? Thank you. Okay. We have now returned to normal. The mi new microphone is on my tie. The technology is stunning. We can land a man on the moon, but etc. etc. Come and come and shut up. Coming up, the Victorian Hill Climb Championship at Queensland at uh, Gippsland Park in Morwell, and the Victorian Motorcana Championship at the Daniloquin Motorsports Complex, which, as luck would have it, is in Daniloquin. They were going to put it in one thing, but it just would have sounded really stupid having it over there. And that's the in pit lane news for whatever's happening uh, April the fourth, and we'll have more news. And we'll go to a break and be back in just a moment with our guests, D Dean Fiore and David Reynolds. Welcome back. And look, we, can't, we love giving away things on Impit Lane, and we can't tell you what we're giving away next week, but we can tell you that it's red and it's somewhere in this shot. There's so many, once again, so many lines, and we can't, we can't use any of them, but that's a bit of a clue. And that's uh, Phil Wilkes to supply that. And I can tell you now, before you get too excited, it's not Lisa. All right? Lisa is our model for the evening. But we are not giving Lisa away, unless, of course, you're young, rich and handsome, in which case she may well be interested. But um, you'll have to broker it through us, OK? Now, as you may have seen, on the weekend at uh, Albert Park, we had races for the Carrera Cup, also at the recent Clips or 500. The Carrera Cup is really becoming sort of the stepping stone into V8 supercars, drivers coming straight out of Formula Ford and driving, going into Carrera Cup. And we've got two of the uh, young stars of the Carrera Cup series with us on tonight's program. Will you please welcome both out of the Sonic Racing Camp, they are Dean Fiore and David Reynolds. Guys, welcome to Winpit Lane. Thank you. Thanks, Brett. Now, let's start with the, let's start with the weekend, first of all. Uh, Dean, we'll start off with, with you. Uh, how did your weekend go? Uh, it started off with a bit of a setback in um, qualifying. A bit of a bad decision on my behalf, but um, we managed to get back up there in the last race. We ended up coming fourth, so it was a good result in the end. 
You come out of, a, a, of an open wheeler background and all that. Now, in the past, when we did the start of the show many years ago, whenever we had guys like you on, it was always the same thing. You know, what do you want to do? Formula Four, then we're going to go to Europe, and then we're going to Formula One. Mm -hmm. The last couple of years, increasingly, people are saying, oh, Formula Ford, Carrera Cup, Development Series, V8 Supercars. Is that is that what you're looking for? Yeah, it does seem to be the common stepping stone at the moment. I mean, Carrera Cup is um, slowly becoming, uh, you know, the the category to be in to sort of, you know, move on up to V8 Supercars. So it is a logical stepping stone for myself, and um, things are going well so far. So it's good. David, what about your weekend? Uh, you had a, you had a couple of good, good results. Ah, uh, yeah, I started off qualifying real good. I qualified second. In the first race, I had the car pace to win. I just couldn't do anything with it. In the second race, it was wet. So I went back to about fourth. So I'm just not too comfortable in the wet as yet. But, you know, I'm learning. So I set the quickest lap time. And, like, as the race progressed, I got quicker and quicker. Uh, the third race, I uh, stuffed up, I think. And the fourth race, I stuffed up. So, yeah. <laughs> stuffed up being a technical term that we, we racing types use, yeah, good. especially at... Um, no, I could have had a better weekend. There. So uh, how difficult are the cars to drive? I mean, if you were sitting there, we've said, it's been said many times, if you were sitting there with a blank piece of paper and said, let's design a really good handling racing car, the last thing you'd do is hang the engine behind the rear axle. But uh, they're, they're pretty good, aren't they? I, know, I find it quite enjoyable. Like Last year, they were quite diff difficult to drive, but this year, they are quite a lot easier. It says... Um, the sequential gearbox, it's more of a race car. Uh, we don't have ABS and things like that sort of make it more driver friendly for people like me and Dean who come out of Formula Ford. Yeah. The difference, I mean, with driving the cars last year, I mean, was it instantly noticed? What in terms of lap times? I mean, have you noticed any major improvements there? Uh, like, a, a, like a street circle like Calypso where it's real rough, we didn't really see much time difference, but a smooth track like Adelaide, I meant not Adelaide, sorry, uh, the Grand Prix, we were about a second and a half quicker, which is pretty quick. Dean, from your point of view, coming from a, once again from that open wheel background, how do you approach something like the Grand Prix meeting is always really hard for the support category. There's I no mean, points. there's no points on mm. it. Um, it's important from a corporate point of view, but really you're on a hiding to nothing. I mean, you get shoved around the schedule, you're on at all times, and Really, you could you can do yourself a bit of good, but you can do yourself an awful lot of harm. Um, yeah, that's sort of what happened to us in, in qualifying. We didn't really need that that bit of extra bit of damage, but it's so great to be at an event, you know, on the world stage. <coughs> so you're in front of, like you said, you know, the corporate sort of people. You're in front of the right right kind of people to do what you want to do. So it's it's great. It's just great to be there. Such a big and, event, and that's one of the advantages of Carrera Cup at the moment, isn't it? That there is, they demand a level of professionalism that's going to put you both in very good stead should you make it that next level into the V8 supercars. Mm, correct. So, as I said during the news, you've got quite a gap between now and 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 May at Wakefield Park. So, what do you do in the meantime? Any testing, Dave? I'm actually doing Bathurst in the GT series next weekend at Bathurst um, in a 04 Cup car, just to do a few miles around the track and. Have a real good go at this year. Dean, what about you? Um, I'm actually trying to do the same race meet at the at yeah, the moment, yeah. trying to <laughs> trying to pull a drive, but um, just sort of looking around at this present moment. But I'll just be training, and um, well, I do some drive days for Mercedes Benz and stuff. So um, yeah, just keeping myself fit and occupied. So okay, well, uh, best of luck to uh, to both of you for the rest of the year. But for now, thanks for joining us in pit lane. Thank thanks you. for having us on the show. And thank you to you at home. Yeah, it's been very chaotic this week, so we're going to go to a, we're going to go straight away. Remember, there will be a competition next week, some uh, Ferrari memorabilia that uh, has been supplied from us from the direct from the Grand Prix, and we'll give you details of that next week when we find out what the hell we're doing with it ourselves. But in the meantime, thanks a lot. Thanks to all of the new crew for coming in. That's another one we've walked away from. Next week, remember the dreaded second show syndrome. So if you think tonight was chaotic. My God, get those videotapes rolling. We'll see you next week. Until then, always remember, motor racing is dangerous. Bye for now.
Can somebody from downstairs please bring my jacket down? How, how long before we go to air? About a minute. About a minute? Okay, thanks. <laughs>